Yes. 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 And he rose up. And they were all gone. Wouldn't it be the surprise of the centuries if somebody had kept what he wrote? I don't think those men would have wanted that. Because obviously it was so powerful, it drove her accusers away. And Jesus, out of compassion, looked at this woman and said, Woman, where art thine accusers? Strange preacher, wasn't it? Different. And he said, she said, Lord, I don't have any. <laughs> They're gone. Hath no man condemned thee? A few minutes before they were going to stone her to death, they wanted him to agree to that stone. And then they were gone. And that woman's world changed. She had a reprieve. But she's no different than I. 64 years ago, I became a Christian. My father gave me a $2.40 Bible. I began to read it. And I became a strange preacher at the age of 14, like Jesus. And I've never fit into society of the norm. Because I've had and found and experienced the man that forgave me my sins, Amen. gave me peace in the night, Amen. saved me in horrible car accidents, Amen. kept me from drowning in the Gulf of Mexico, Amen. saved me when planes were coming down to the earth, and I was in that plane, <clears throat> kept me from dying in twisted metal and steel, and has gotten me past all the critics and I've had some just like you. But I'm here tonight to say it's a beautiful life to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and to walk with Him and to love Him. It's a peaceful life. I wouldn't advise you to get it mixed up in religion. It will give you tormenting fear at night. It will not heal your trouble. Join 10,000 churches. You'll never find the answer. But you get one experience Amen. with Jesus Christ. Amen. And don't let it be anything but real. Let it be real. And it will take you past your critics, past those who disagree. It will take you through a troubled home. It will get you past poverty. It will get you past the blues. And sadness and depression the power of Jesus Christ is greater than any single force on this earth that's why I'm going to praise him right now yes, and to worship him and to give him the glory and when you are getting into a road with no end you're a dead end street of life fever raging in your body your friends Turned away. Say one name. Don't say Smith. Don't say Jones. Don't say my name. I don't care if you're in bed at night and you think the doors are coming in on you. I don't care if you're in a car and you feel like you have no tomorrow. Say the name Jesus. And it's something wonderful will happen in your life. In fact, I, I think I'll say his name right now. Jesus. There's something about that name. Jesus. Jesus.
I had the privilege to be with them in their church, beautiful sanctuary, wonderful three days I got to spend there in Kingsport, Tennessee, Mercy Seat Ministries, lovely place, and they treated me so well and so good. And they were here in our convention and spent the three days with us in the March convention last year. Now they're here with us in the local weekend services, and I want us to give them in a moment a great big welcome. on them to feel at home. I doubt I will say too much more over the weekend. I want them to take their liberty and minister along with the saints and worship the elders of the church here. I'd like to welcome Brother Tom Parrish to my handshake right here. Welcome, Brother Tom Parrish. Thank you, Brother. Uh, Brother Lee Ray is the senior elder at Kingsport, Tennessee, Mercy Seat Ministry. And Brother Tom Parrish works right with him. Brother Doug Atkins works with him. And we The sheep in Kingsport, Tennessee, they have a beautiful place, uh, beautiful people, and one day we'll just maybe load up the bus and go up there and be with them in Kingsport. Welcome, brother. Welcome. Let's give them a hand of welcome. Let them know that we appreciate them being here with us. Then, uh, I can't, this, this just tops out the weekend uh, when brother James Harris, yes, yes, yes. part of us, one of us, yes. 30 yet some years, 35 years. I always try to get 35, 36 uh, years. He was right here with us, yes. reared his family here, yes, he, he and Sister Harris, and worked with me on the ministry day after day, hour after hour, week right. after week, building these buildings and working on these buildings and building the gospel and teaching and preaching, and we miss him, don't we? We miss him. We are our miss. We miss him very much. And then Margie, Sister Harris, Margie Harris, right over here. Raise your hand, Margie. She and dear wife is with him tonight. We're so glad of that. And I welcome Brother Harris home. Yes, amen. We're so glad you're here. Well, Harris, you just made our weekend. We're just thankful you're here and you're at home. You know this assembly, you know it well, you know the inside out of it, and just let the Lord use you and work through you. And we're going to have a great weekend. We're going to have what God wants. I don't want anybody under a strain, nobody uh, not comfortable. Uh, just say, Lord, I'm here to worship you. I'm here to let you have your way. I'm going to praise you, and how many will pray that God will lead them to the church this weekend, and lead them in the spirit, and in the truth, and in the word, and then we want to welcome these men, as I said, and let them be at home with us, and then Karen, it's good to see you again, uh, I want you to come as often as you can, and be with us, I think these are the outstanding ones that are here visiting and uh, being a part of us this week. Oh, I looked out, surely. I would not do that. I always leave out someone, but I don't want to leave you out, surely. Uh, this is Brother Harris's dear 